screen. Um, Okay, we see it. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming together to discuss about this topic. Um, and my name is uh, Esperance Kujia. I'm a plant breeder. I'm come. I'm um, connecting from Benin, Benin Republic, and uh, this is a great privilege for me to share my knowledge on the aspects on the topic, explanatory data analysis. Uh, this chapter cover um, how to explore our data, how to see different pattern, how to visualize the data. Um, how to draw significant conclusion to know which pattern follow our data uh, in order to end up with modeling, if that is the um, our objectives. So here, explanatory data analysis is an analysis um, approach that identifies general pattern in the data. This pattern includes outliers and uh, feature of the data that might be unexpected. An initial step in data analysis is to examine how the values of different variables are di distributed and uh, it helps us to draw or to plot different type of uh, figures like graph, histogram, post plot, depending on the categories of data we have. And uh, this information are very uh, useful uh, in that it helps us to know the distribution of our data and to select the appropriate analysis that we want to conduct. And then it's different to, uh, you know, uh, recognize the two type of questions that we can ask. Um, what type of variation occurs within my variables and what type of co-variation occurs uh, between my variables? Um, explore the variation within the variable of the observation, deal with outliers, as I said, and missing val values, explore the co-variation, I mean the relationship, um, the uh, association or among the, the, the variables on the observation. Recognize how model can be used to explore different patterns. Some of uh, some are those questions that we can ask. Uh, let me go, go to the next slide. Um, okay, let me reduce this. Okay, um, some of the vocabulary we have to uh, get used to our variable. What are variables? Variables uh, is simply quantity, quality, or property that you can measure. And the value uh, is the state of the variable when you measure it. Uh, it can change. It can change. That value can change from one individual for to another. Uh, the observation is a set of measurements made um, under similar conditions, and one value per variable. And the tabular data. Uh, those are the observation of our our variables. Is is kind of with a, a table, and the tidy data. Data, you know, after uh, observing your, taking your data, you need to put it in a normal format for how to accept it. And for that, we call, we use a tidy vest and tidy vest to tidy our data. And uh, you will have one observation per row, one variable per color, one value per cell, and all of that. So moving to the next, I'm going to, talk about the variation, possible variation that we can have. The variations, uh, as a definition, we can say is a tendency of values of a variable to change between measurements. Categorical is depend on the, the, the data we have. You know, when you have categorical data, 
um, you can like uh, an hour example, for instance, in our study, uh, when you take a data diamond ggplot to the library, you will see that um, cat is uh, categorical data because we have fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal. Those are the categorical data. And what you can do with categorical data is to simply use Geomba, Geomba to see each, uh, uh, like uh, the performance of each categorical variables in our data. So we can have something like this using this um, uh, uh, function. We can have uh, this uh, bar chart. We call it bar chart. And uh, when we are dealing with um, continuous data, um, continuous data, we can take it on infinite set or other values. And uh, when you have continuous data, obviously you will need to use the geom histogram. And uh, the example we took here is um, in ggplot. Um, I use um, S like uh, um, carat data, uh, the, the, the carat variables, excuse me. The carat, carat variables is a continuous data that we use to plot to see how many individuals uh, at each value, how many individuals uh, have those um, uh, peak or have those um, values. And here, um, here uh, you can select the bin. Bin width uh, selected here is 0 0.5. When you reduce the bin width, you are getting something smaller and it will help you look closer uh, here, but you can see, guess um, approximately the variation we have uh, is not that, uh, we can say that it's a bit skewed to the left. We can say that it's normally distributed. Here, one of the aspects to look at is the data on X is zero from zero to, um, we can see four here, although there is no value after three. So to make it, uh, to remove outliers, for instance, to make it a bit specific, we can decide to remove, uh, to maintain all the values inferior or lesser than uh, three. What we did in the next argument, for instance, we call an object smaller and uh, we assign diamond a pipe it. When we pipe it, we filter. You, you have to remember that um, when we use filter, is tidyverse function that we have already um, uh, called that help us to, you know, to bring out those results. When you activate your tidy vest, it take into consideration all these uh, tidy uh, functions. So those filter, uh, you filter carats uh, in inferior or lesser than three, and ggplot, uh, you use that smaller um, object in ggplot as a new data that that uh, you use uh, plus the aesthetic uh, mapping um, coordinates, which are the, 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 the yes, you, you specify the X and the color by port, and uh, you use geom poly here because um, this is another way, an alternative when you don't want to use uh, um, um, bars. When you want, you don't want to use bar. You are free to use uh, geom poly to see um, um, the polygon and how the pattern are distributed alongside the carat values. And some of the question we can ask here is to um, uh, which value are the common the most common here. Here, uh, if I'm to answer this question, I can say the most common value is around 0 0.5 because the peak is already high here, um, is uh, above 4,000, uh, 4, 4, 4,000 or 5,000, if I can read it well. So we can say this, um, uh, the peak here is that that value is around 0 0.5 is most represented in our data. And which value are rare? Value that are rare, I can say, okay, their value tending to three are very rare here because uh, I can see um, 
um, zero or maybe one uh, integer has uh, a, a value of 2.5 uh, or 2.6 uh, something. So those are the questions we can ask. Can you see any unusual pattern? I cannot see any unusual pattern here. Um, uh, all, all the patterns seem uh, going the same way. And um, also, um, as I said, once you want to see, you can act or you can uh, um, act on the win bits if you want to see the the distribution in a smaller size or in small in subgroup you can uh, reduce like uh, before we use uh, bin b for 0 0.05 or 0 0.5 here uh, the bin width is very reduced to 0 0.01 that make us to see this graph uh, the subgroup are so many years. So it depends on what you want to draw as a conclusion or decision on your data. So you see different approaches that help you explain better your results. I can say here, um, some are slightly, um, uh, the, the peak are slightly higher at the left to the right side. So it depends on me how I will interpret my data. So how are the observing, uh, observation within each cluster uh, similar to each other? Uh, how are the observation in separate cluster different from each other? Uh, how can you explain or describe the cluster? Why might the appearance of the cluster be misleading? So some of those questions we can ask uh, about ourselves uh, when we are dealing with uh, uh, a being with smaller to a uh, subgroup to understand better our uh, data pattern. So talking about, um, I'm moving now to the outliers or unusual values that we don't want in our data. Talking about outliers, uh, outliers generally, they are um, observations that are unusual data point that don't seem to fit the pattern at all. Sometimes um, outliers are data entry error. Sometimes there are simply values at the extreme that happen to be observed in this data collection. So when you have a lot of data, outliers are sometimes difficult to see in a histogram. For example, let's take this uh, common example um, of um, uh, diamond data and take the y variable and see um, if we try to plot like that within with 0 0.5, see how the plot is. We can merely see any uh, outlier is here. But once we go further, what we can use is called the Cartesian or ggplot library, for instance. It has that um, uh, function that you can use called uh, Cartesian argument or function of that library to decide which as you want to develop or zoom more when you decide to zoom on the y axis of for instance this is the argument you can use and here the limit uh, i set is zero uh, to 50 and when i set it to zero to 50 i can see um uh, visible um i can see clearly the outlier they are coming out here um anything in the lesser than three and uh, above 20 they are considered as outliers and to deal with those outliers uh, we can simply use um um Tidyverse, um, uh, we can simply use the plier to, oh, mutate function rather. You can simply use mutate function to replace all this um, outlier unusual data or weird data uh, with any. Uh, some people we do uh, drop the entire data, that is not advisable. What is advisable is to uh, assign, you know, call a new object. Here I call it diamond two, and uh, uh, diamond two uh, 
uh, is equal to diamond and I type it and I use the mutate function. This mutate function is telling us that, okay, now we take any uh, greater um, uh, of a lesser value than three out, uh, take a lesser value than three and y greater than 20, we place them by any. So this is uh, what I did here. And the data is tidy. Some of the rows, some of the values are um, replaced by any. So sometimes in ggplot2, it has the advantages of deleting automatically the missing value once you run your command. But uh, most of the time, it's also good to specify with any dot rm uh, equal to true uh, to to do your um, to run your um, analysis or your your command. Uh, now we are going to move to covariation. What is covariation? Uh, covariation is the tendency of values of different variables to vary together in a related way. So the best way to spot covariation is to visualize the relationship between two or more variables of your data set. Of, of your data set. Um, here, when you are dealing with categorical and continuous data, for instance, when you want to see the relationship between a categorical data and the continuous data, what you can use is geo plot, bus plot, bus plots. So you use bus plots side by side to simply visualize the pattern, the relationship, and how distributed the, the um, your data, your individual are alongside the values on the uh, y axis. When you see the x axis here, it's contain a categorical data. The y axis contain the numerical data, and it gets an proper interpretation that we can. That means um, uh, uh, almost um, fifty percent of the of uh, populations have uh, a mean um, have a price value between. Um, let's say um, lesser than 2,555, 5, so about 50% uh, has between this value of the fair category. So um, we also have uh, geom count, you know, and uh, supplier count uh, using geom tile to see um, when we are dealing with uh, those sorts of data. So when the two data, the two variables are continuous, what you use, normally use is, uh, you can use GeoPoint to see the general pattern of, of the um, association or the variable variation between the, the two uh, variables. For instance, how I plot it here, I can see S and Y, uh, they tend when um, X is tending to increase, Y2 is increasing. However, it's important to go further and see how strong is this relationship. You can see something like that and the uh, root um, uh, mean square error can be so big. So we can go further and looking at the pattern Finding pattern, you know, finding pattern. Uh, as we have to ask ourselves, could this pattern to be be due to coincidence? How can you describe the relationship implied by this pattern? How strong is the relationship implied by the pattern? That is where I have I wanted to emphasize about the R R M M. Um, a root uh, mean square error, for instance. Uh, when you plot, when you see the association, maybe the R square, the R square can be high, but you have to also look at the, uh, the, 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 the root mean square error. If uh, it's very high, uh, you have to look at another algorithm uh, that fits better your, if you are going to model, 
going to for modeling, you have to see how strong is that relationship to how one variable can be uh, uh, defined in function of the second variable. Those are the questions. What are, what other variable might affect that relationship? Uh, you can put um, maybe several variables in the model and check maybe using a stepwise regression. It is not developed in this chapter, but I can see those are the uh, question we can ask ourselves. Uh, this is kind of uh, exploring uh, the pattern of data and it's not uh, all the data, they, they seem not follow the same pattern. You can have ascending uh, line, descending line, some are not correlated at all. It depends. So if if you plot, can we go uh, ahead in doing like a correlation analysis to see whether uh, it follow, uh, uh, the, the, the correlation is high and then you plot it, if it's high, you plot it, you, 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 you fit a model, you define your R, uh, uh, R square and your root mean square to see how, and also if it's not continuous, if it's not related, it's not meant to be false, there are so many other written, other relationships that we can find out, like for instance, uh, logistic regression, for instance, in logistic regression, for instance, uh, where we have like two possible ways to analyze, like uh, it's susceptible or resistant, or yes or no, two just possible uh, possibilities. We have to, we can do logistic regression uh, using low function. So this depends on the type of data we have. Uh, and our hands. Uh, some of these, uh, I saw it in the course, the lecture, this one I can see is by Moda. And this is showing us how to use ggplot, how to uh, put our arguments uh, uh, together to get uh, the same answer. There are three ways here. The first way you can specify the type equal to, you know, the variables. Um, mapping equal to with the aesthetics function and the geo uh, function. And here, you may not specify data equal, just put data. We are used to it. And here, too, we uh, like, here it is put uh, John's, John's crazy way. So here, uh, it's decorated it and it looks very nice and beautiful. So, um, I thank you for your attention. If you want to learn more about it, this course is certain like uh, some uh, link I put. And uh, thank you so much for the privilege. We are here to share. I'm open for your <laughs> comments. Have any um, exciting, if any uh, insight about this topic, you are free to to see your, your mind and to let me even check the, the uh, chat. Mm -hmm. I've not been checking the chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Does anyone have questions, comments? Um, was there anything in this chapter that, I don't know, stood out to anybody? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, well, especially the exercises, uh, I, I found some very interesting hints to packages that I had never used before, uh, and things that I have never had never heard before of, uh, like letter value box plots, for example. Um, and uh, what was the B swarm package to make other types of yeah, jitter-like plots, which also reflect the uh, distribution uh, of the data. So there's nice uh, graphs to uh, to to create there. Yeah, um, bee swarms are very cool. A lot of people do uh, bee swarm plots for Tidy Tuesday. So I've seen many examples. Um, I've made one or two, but seen many.
Um, sure. Anything else? All right. Well, uh, like I said, next week, uh, Lily Lynn will be talking to us about communication. Um, and, uh, you know, I look forward to that. I think it's, that's an interesting placement. I haven't read this version of this one yet, but I know like the last um, couple chapters are another like wave of communication information. So uh, we get it a couple of times in this edition of the book. Um, cool. All right. If there's nothing else, I will see everybody else or see everybody on Slack. Bye. Bye, thanks.